All right, welcome back. So um, the, now we're going to do um, the ACLs on the routers. Don't forget. So to, when you were all done, you save this and you submit it. All right, so here's the first. Last time we did is PC0 was able to access the HTTP. So let's try that again. If you go to the desktop and here you go, you see that. Remember that? You typed in the IP address of the server. And you went out and got the index.html and you were able to display this. Now, what we're going to do is, here's the thing. We, we do not want PC0 to actually be able to access the HTTP server. Only the HTTP index HTTP. He can access anything else on the server. He can ping them, access all the different types of services that are there, except the HTTP. So what are you going to do? The first thing you're going to decide do you want to create a, a standard or an extended list? So the answer is extended. Why? Because what you're going to do is you're coming from here, going to a specific destination, and you are trying to access a specific protocol. Because of that, standard list doesn't do that. You have to use an extended list. And to use an extended list, where are you going to place it? You're going to place it close to the source. Where's the source of the sender? PC0 is R1. So you're going to put it on R1. So let's go to R1. Type EN. Config T. All right. So let's uh, type IP access dash list. We're going to create a named access list. It's going to be extended. And let's call it um, no dash http right let's give it the name no http no http all right we are going to deny the tcp host uh 192.168.10.1 right um uh going to host 172.16.100.1 and we're going to do equal 80. all right so we're going to deny that and we are then we are going to say permit ip any any permit everybody else okay and then we where are we going to apply it we are going to apply it right here on the end to the router, right? That's the closest we can get. So I'm gonna go to interface G0 slash zero, and I'm going to say um, IP access dash group, and please apply the no HTTP on the end. And that's it. Well, let's test it out. So let's see if now PC0 can do HTTP. So let's do 172.16.100.1. And he should be blocked from doing that. And it looks like it's being blocked. All right, request timed out. All right, to verify to make sure that that works, I'm going to add another user and you should be able to get in right so let's put in another user another pc and we're going to give him the ip address 192 dot i'm sorry dot 168.10.2 and 192.168.10.254 dot dot is is that P address? All right. I'm going to connect them to port two, which is in the same LAN. Get a straight through cable. Go from the fast Ethernet to the switch. Choose fast Ethernet 03. Okay. It is not turning green fast enough. Let's just hit the fast forward. So it turns green fast. Okay. Beautiful. All right. He should be able to access the server because he wasn't blocked. The access list should let him through, right? So if he goes in and types 172.16.100.1, .1, he 
he should be able, and he does, right? So the only guy who's blocked is this guy. All right, beautiful. So that's that. Now, here's another thing. I want PC0 is the only one that is allowed to tell net into R2, right? With a specific password. Anybody else should not be able to tell that into R2. So where are you going? Is it going to be a standard or an extended list? The answer is standard because always when you want to create a VTY, uh, apply, a v uh, uh, apply an access list on a VTY, it's always a standard. And a standard, you're going to do it close to the destination in PC0. So here's the destination, R2. So you click on that and let's go in and do en config t and uh, let's go in and type in the username let's create a username called admin and let me give him a secret password let's call it a uh, class in this case all right and then let's create an ip access dash list Let's create a standard access list and let's call it um, tell net in capital letters, right? And in this access list, I'm going to permit um, the host um, 192.168.10.1. All right, I'm not going to write anything after that because there's an implicit deny. So everybody else will be denied in this access list called Telnet. All right, now I'm gonna go to the line VTY zero to four on the Telnet line. And I am going to say login local. That means, oh, not muffin, login. Okay. So um, the authentication is going to be on the server because I have the username and uh, the username admin and the password secret on the server itself. All right. Then I'm going to say uh, transport input telnet. So that means only telnetting is a transport telnet. Only telnet is allowed into the router, you cannot do SSH. All right, now I'm going to apply by typing the word access last, not IP access group, right? Because now we're applying an ACL on a VTY line. Okay, access class, the, the ACL telnet coming in. All right, that's it. So PC1 should be able to telnet right and he needs the username and password so let's see everybody else should not be able to so if pc1 goes in to the command prompt and he types in telnet 172 uh, well what is he going to tell that to do? the best way to tell that is to tell that to the serial port of router 2 that's the closest he can tell it from any interface by the way but the best thing is to tell that through the serial port of R2 because that's in his direction. So telnet space 10.10.10.6, right? All right, they prompt me for a username. The username is admin. And they'll prompt me for a password and the password is, um, what is it, class. And I'm in. By the way, because I did not set up uh, an enabled password, I cannot get in. Right? So all I had to do is just go in the router here. And if I get out of this, exit and type enable secret Cisco. And I go back in here um, into PC0. And I let me try that. Enable. And what's the password? Cisco. Now I'm able to do that. I could do show run. And there's my show run and all the goodies, right? And there is my configuration. Isn't that cool? All right. Now, PC2 should not be able to tell that. Let's say he got the password. But if he tried to tell that, let me just close this and go to 
tell net and uh, tell net what ten dot ten dot ten dot six he should be blocked and he is you see isn't that cool now you can write statements and create firewalls you are able to filter out packets according to the source ip address all right so um we'll do more in class in class activities we'll do a little bit more we'll do more access lists more, more sophisticated i guess or whatever you want to call it but this is pretty much it all right so um save this packet tracer and upload it and i'll see you on the next module